Welcome back to KC Talks EV. Now, this is obviously going to look very odd. I normally film a lot in my ZS EV, but there are two reasons for that. So the first reason is that due to a hard drive failure, I've managed to lose a considerable amount of the summary footage, and that's why I'm here refilming all of it. The second reason why I'm not in my car, however, is that I've been self-isolating for the last nine days, and by tomorrow, hopefully, I will gain some level of freedom given the fact that I've been asymptomatic for the last nine days, fingers crossed. But that's the reason why I am currently in my spare bedroom. So the range test comprises of the standard test route, which is from Hull to Burstall and back. So that is approximately 123 miles. In terms of weather conditions, we're looking at 10 to 11 degrees Celsius with a slight headwind of seven miles per hour or wind from the west and therefore I should get a slight tailwind on the way back hopefully cancelling out any effects from the wind. So anyway let's get started. So my worst fears have happened, um, it started raining, which is the thing that I really wanted to avoid yesterday. Um, hopefully it doesn't affect the result too badly, um, I, I'm not quite sure however. Um, obviously, you know, rain does increase, uh, well decrease efficiency and therefore decrease the range um, by a certain amount. And I, I really do hope that I can get some form of representative result from this. But we'll see. So I will be coming off and going back the other way very shortly. Um, but we'll see. So we've just done 61.6 miles, average speed of 62 miles per hour. So we're looking at yeah about um, about an hour driving. Um, I've got 101 miles remaining, so we should be able to make it back. Um, unfortunately, as I said, we've hit a bit of rain, and I'm just about to go straight back into it again. Um, which might uh, reduce the range a little bit and apart from that everything seems to be pretty good I mean I've been trying out the um, the Mark Levinson stereo and it is absolutely brilliant so um, apart from that I think we're all good so let's let's keep going So the range test is complete. I arrived back with 21% remaining. I will put the table up here. By the way, I have also converted the results into metric as well. So in terms of total distance, we are looking at 123 miles, average speed of 63 miles per hour, average efficiency of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Therefore, if you extrapolate the total available capacity I was able to use was 48.65 kilowatt hours. Now, this is significantly higher than what Bjorn Nyland got in his range test of the Lexus UX 300e. So that is quite interesting, but that is the result I got. And finally, the theoretical 100% down to 0% range is approximately 156 miles. So in terms of the actual range, it's fairly reasonable. I mean, the general sort of points of reference, I guess, if you wanted one, would be, for example, the Kona 39 kilowatt hour, although bear in mind the Kona is significantly more efficient and will deliver similar range with less capacity. In terms of its class, at least, you're looking at the XC40 recharge. It is noticeably less efficient according to the EV database, but should have certainly much higher overall range due to the fact that the battery size is larger. 
In terms of other range tests I have completed, although obviously not in similar conditions, the ZS EV would be slightly less efficient if you extrapolated it between the winter and the summer range test, but there wouldn't be that much in it, to be quite honest with you. So I think at this point, we'll move on to the charging test. So we just arrived here at the Holiday Inn Hull Marina. We arrived here with 10% after a quick motorway drive and also a bit of countryside driving. By the way, this car handles spot on, by the way. Um, so yeah, as I said, we arrived here on 10%. This car doesn't have voltage or amp reading, so I can't really work it out. However, I can easily work out a average kilowatt rate. So I've got my camera up there doing the time lapse. I've had to park absolutely awfully. So I apologize to anyone who will probably arrive here at some point, but hopefully we'll be able to judge um, rough charging speeds and I'll give you an update every five, 10 minutes. So 10 minutes in, 26% state of charge and 7.3 kilowatt hours added to the car. I'm gonna try and do these every 10 minutes um, just as kind of a backup and also have a rolling commentary over the time lapse. So let's see how we do. So we're 20 minutes in, it's at 42% state of charge. We've added 14.6 kilowatt hours into the car. So as I said, the next update will probably be in 30 minutes. So it turns out that camera stops recording after 30 minutes, but luckily I was in the back of the car, so I was able to just uh, um, to press record again. So we reached 56% after half an hour. We've added 21.6 kilowatts to the car. It seems to be really, really constant in terms of its charge rate. So I did a qu uh, quick calculation, and it looks as though that in the first 10 minutes we were getting 43.5 kilowatt, which is um, pretty fast, if you um, pretty fast to be honest. So hopefully it will stay fairly constant until we start reaching around 80%. So that's the charging test complete. I will put the table up here. So average kilowatt was 40.8 kilowatts. Overall, the speed is reasonable, I would say. Certainly isn't industry leading, but definitely kept a consistent charge rate throughout the entire charge session. Again, compared to the Volvo XC40 Recharge, it is significantly slower given the fact that the XC40 Recharge has a 150 kilowatt CCS DC charging connector. However, it certainly is adequate, let's say. Note that this car doesn't support higher than 50 kilowatt Chadamo. So if you do have the option of choosing between a rapid and a HPC or what's known as a 100 kilowatt plus rapid charger, don't bother using those. Use the 50 kilowatt because the likely is you're not going to get any higher speeds anyway. And especially if it costs more money, then definitely just use the rapid charger. I would also say that similar rules still apply for charging beyond 80, 90%. I would say unless you really need to charge at that point, then it really isn't worth it. For example, when I was balancing the pack of the car in anticipation for the range test, at 96%, 95, 96% state of charge, you were looking at a six kilowatt charge rate. So at this point, it really is worth just leaving and getting to your next charger. And with looking at and combining the range test data, you're looking at 110, 120 miles before you need to stop again with around 80% if you don't mind pushing it towards the limit. So in summary, with respect to the range test, we are looking at a 156 mile range from 100% down to 0% theoretical range. Again, the most important thing is, is if it's acceptable for your particular use case scenario, then the range is fairly reasonable. Okay, this certainly isn't a class leader with respect to efficiency or overall absolute range. However, if it's okay for your use case scenario, well, that's great. With respect to the charging curve test, it certainly isn't a class leader in that respect. When you're looking at things like the Volvo XC40 Recharge, it charges significantly faster. However, the most important thing I will mention is that the charge rate is fairly consistent. Another thing I will also mention is you've got to make sure that if you do have the choice between a rapid or a HPC, especially if the HPC costs more money, then you may as well use the rapid because you won't benefit from the higher charging speeds. So I guess that's pretty much it. So if you like the video or you found it informative, please like that video. Please dislike it if you didn't. Be sure to click on that bell icon so you are informed of any future videos. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you're not already, please subscribe. But anyway, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.